Hey there, my fellow learners. Thank you for joining me in this uh, brief video tutorial about the staple of high school composition, the five-paragraph essay. Now, you should know that when you get to college, you may well hear a college composition professor rail against the five-paragraph essay, stating that all subjects do not fit neatly into five-paragraph essays. They may even forbid you to write a five-paragraph essay. And indeed, on one level, they are correct. Not every subject fits neatly into five paragraphs. However, they may also smugly tell you to, advise you to, forget everything else you learned in high school about composition. And I, of course, am going to uh, strongly disagree with that. But when we consider that uh, five paragraphs in, in the 40 minutes, essentially, that we are allotted on the AP essay exam, or, or really for, uh, for class purposes in, in AP or English 12 or other subjects, well, that's, that's, uh, that's about all we can manage. I think that's a very reasonable time frame and, and length to, uh, to work within and trying to hone our skills to prepare us for uh, yet greater rigors of college composition. We can learn the basic formats, and you're going to see that, that five is really a, more of a guideline than a requirement or a restriction. Now, let's not talk about five paragraphs so much as we talk about five parts. Any one of these parts may occupy more than one paragraph. First of all, our first part is going to be uh, the introductory paragraph, the introduction. We are going to have, uh, let's say, at least three parts in the body. And then, of course, a conclusion. Now, I talked about three parts in the body. That works rather well when writing about literature. Uh, we can talk about the uh, the beginning part of the story, the the middle part of the story, and and the ending part of the story. We can talk about the conflict, the complication, the climax. Three is a manageable number to deal with here. Now we do need to have this mind, uh, this number in mind early in the planning session. Um, though plans do and should change as we go forth with the essay. But we, we need, uh, in the intro, to announce where the essay is going and being able to highlight the focus of the first body paragraph or first body part, the second and the third, is, is critical. Let's talk about that introduction. It should include an author in the title of the piece of literature, properly punctuated, mind you. It should give a story overview or situation. We want to know what the story is about, not just, just jump right into some broad statement of, of concepts and themes. Uh, who are the characters? What's the, what's the conflict? What's the problem? What's the situation the characters face? And then we need to end that introductory paragraph with a, a thesis, a, a main idea, the focus of the, uh, the entire essay. In many ways, it's a, a sort of roadmap indicating where the three body paragraphs are going to go. Speaking of the body paragraphs, they're going to take turns developing this thesis, proving uh, one part of it at a time. And the sentence that's most critical here is the topic sentence. It will take one part of that thesis, and it will make a claim in a matter of interpretation. And then we need to advance that with uh, some evidence, a.k.a. support, supporting details, proof, examples, illustrations. Direct quotations fall into this category. It's all the same stuff. But regardless, it needs to be specific, it needs to be relevant to the point you want to prove, and there needs to be a certain quantity. When we talk about a well-developed paragraph, first of all, that means that it includes several details or examples, whatever you call them, as well as including the third element, explanation. Now this is the toughest part, I believe, to provide. Please note that explanation explains, of course, or that is points out how the examples support the claim. It ties it back, in other words, to the topic sentence. Conclusions tie it all together. Now, ideally, they should not present any new evidence, but they may offer one last telling example. Kind of confusing and contradictory, huh? Essentially, though, the conclusion finalizes your reasoning and, and perhaps summarizes the arguments you presented in your body. And it likely restates the thesis. Now, when it comes to improving your writing, even if you instinctively seem to write well, it's very important that, that you learn how to assess, especially in the body paragraphs, whether or not you have included these three elements. That is, that you're able to discriminate 
about when you offer a claim, when you offer support, when you offer ex, uh, explanation, when you explain. You need to become conscious of these things if you ever hope to improve your writing. Thanks for joining me in this video tutorial. Can't wait to talk to you next time and uh, spend some time with you assessing what you've actually accomplished in your writing.